Welcome to my channel if you're new here or welcome back if you're not. It's been so long since I last filmed, like I don't even know what I usually say. I always say I'm gonna keep my intros really short and I never do and this time like I'm actually like Annie editing this. Edit out everything else I say after this because because I know I'll start rambling on about stuff, like the fact that we've reached 30,000 subscribers, which is insane, especially since I haven't been uploading at all. So like that blows my mind. Thank you so much for believing in me. I am going to honestly try my hardest to upload for you guys. It's just really hard sometimes when I've got uni work to do and then I'm kind of, I don't know, feeling a bit uninspired at the moment. Today, I was thinking about this story time and I said to myself, why haven't I told this story? And then I realized it's because it involves my second year housemates. And the last time I made a story time about them, I got a message from one of them saying, oh, what was it? He called me a calamitous moron. And if some of you don't know, basically in my second year of university I ended up living with eight guys. I was the only girl. I'll link the video either down below or up here or both, I guess, if I'm feeling fancy. Spoiler, it didn't work out well. So the guy who sent me this, I didn't realise he was a fan. Like, I'll give you a shout out if you want. Like, just hit me up, you know? To start the story. Genuinely the single most disgusting story I'll ever tell my channel, ever. So if you're not into, like, gross things turn away like click click something else because you're not gonna like this i'm pretty sure youtube is either gonna demonetize this video or like age restrict it or something because it, right i'll i'll tell you why so basically this story is about the time i was witness to uni rugby initiations and if you don't know what that is it's basically well if you're from america you it's kind of like hazing, but instead of like sororities and fraternities, we have societies and it's kind of the same thing, but not really like societies are kind of like people with a common interest meeting up and um, doing stuff together. Like for example, the rugby society, they're a sports team, they play rugby together um, and against other unis as well. There's like a Beyonce society, there's like Harry Potter societies, like there's a society for everything basically. The thing that a lot of societies have in common with fraternities in America and societies is the fact that they do something like hazing or as we would call it, initiations. And it basically hints in the name, you initiate the new people into the society by doing horrible things to them basically. Men's sports societies are kind of like next level when it comes to that sort of thing because I've heard stories of my friends going to society initiations that were predominantly run by girls. Like the worst thing you would have had to have done is eat cat food or something or like down your drink or whatever. The guys' societies are like <laughs> on a whole nother level. So my housemates who were in second year, they were in charge of the whole thing. So they kind of warned me and they were like, hey, by the way, we're having initiations at our house, like, just to let you know in case you hear screaming or anything. And I'm just like, okay, like I'm scared, but also intrigued. That day I decided to go for some ice cream that had been an ice cream parlor that just opened down the road from us. So while the initiations got started, I was, eating ice cream. So basically we have a basement and the first years who are the people being initiated had to strip and go down into our basement naked and it, it was about like 20 of them I want to say so while I was eating ice cream having a great time I had about 20 naked boys locked in my basement and like that makes me sound like one of those kidnappers who keep people in their basements and that was literally me for a little while basically so while they were in there they had to down loads of drinks and they just made them drink loads to a point where they had to bring a bucket down boys who were locked in the basement they were in there for a couple of hours and when you're constantly drinking you know you're in there for hours you're going to like your body is how do i put this your body needs to get rid of certain things be it you know you need to go to the toilet or 
you need to throw up because you've had too much to drink because the older guys are making you down loads of alcohol but they weren't allowed to leave our basement so instead they got a bucket any time and every time someone had to use the bathroom for whatever reason the bucket was in the corner so then one by one they got sorted into teams and some of them were left in the basement just to wait around and the other half got sent into town and they had like a list of things they had to do. Take a picture with a bald person and send it to the group chat. Or draw um, draw on someone's face in town and take a picture with it. Stuff like that, like almost like a scavenger hunt. But then there was some more sinister ones. Like, <sighs> I told you this was disgusting, but one of the boys had to <laughs> he had to shit in his hands and clap basically and take a video of it and send it to the guys so at this point I'm leaving the ice cream parlor I kind of wanted to go back home and see what was going on like are people still alive are they okay I want to know I can hear like shouting and screaming and for some reason I don't know why I didn't go check but I suddenly got really tired Probably actually because I'm lactose intolerant and I just had like three scoops of ice cream, but you know living on the edge But instead I went to go sleep for a bit like a lactose Induced coma half an hour later. I get a knock on my door and it was one of my housemates and he comes in and I'm still kind of like woozy and he goes Hey, um, I have a question. Do you? <laughs> Again, I don't know how to tiptoe around what he said but he basically asked me if I had some <laughs> he basically said can I borrow some of your pubes um, I'm still like half asleep and I'm just like what and he goes yeah I want to make one of the first years drink it in a drink so I need some pubes do you have any <laughs> and as it happens that day I didn't have any to spare I guess and that's what I said, I was like, you can have some of my hair from my hairbrush, but none on me right now. And he goes, oh, okay, it's fine, like, I can just do it myself. He grabs my nail scissors that were on my table, drops down his trousers and just starts cutting his pubes off. But at this point, do you know what? I was so desensitized to all that because I'd lived with them at this point for like two months and in those two months I had seen a lot so seeing him butt naked cutting his pubes off with my nail scissors didn't phase me Think, thinking about it now I don't I don't understand like how I didn't really think anything of it but here we are so at this point I'm just like I kind of want to see what's going on can I come downstairs and he's like yeah sure like go for it so we go downstairs and it was really intimidating because the whole room was filled with second and third year rugby guys because it's always the older guys that are in charge of the initiations and stuff with the first years like the whole room was filled with guys and I was in my bathrobe just waking up so I looked great you know Everyone was really nice <laughs> until until one of the first years got led up from our basement into our living room. So keeping in mind, these boys had been kept in our basement for a good three, maybe four hours because when they had to go into town, they would swap over. So there's always a bunch of people in our basement while some other people had to go into town and they would like swap over. Quite a few people had to do some very disgusting things like the whole clapping thing. So it's safe to say that when those boys walked in through the living room, you could smell them from the hallway. This guy walks in and he's butt naked. He was he was obviously very surprised because he wasn't expecting a girl to be there. Fair enough if you're naked in front of a bunch of guys, they've probably seen you naked before, but I don't think they were expecting me there. They made him kneel down onto our floor and they go, right, I want you to tell us your best sex story or whatever. And he tells it and it's fine, everyone laughs. So the guy in charge tells this boy, let's call him Harry. So they tell Harry, right, Harry, you've been put in a group 
your teammates have gone out into town, had to do like certain things and your group is one point behind the winning group. What are you willing to do for your group? And I guess this was meant to be like team building or whatever, but it was some messed up team building. So Harry was all like, oh my God, I, I want, I really want my team to win. What do I have to do? Like, I'll do anything. Next thing I know, they bring out a cucumber with a condom over it. And they hand it to him and they tell him that his team will win if he inserts the cucumber. I'm sure you can guess where. And you know what this boy does? In instead of just saying, no, I'm not inserting things into my orifices, he goes, okay, gets up and... Yeah, he did that. Sis did that. So then, once he left the room to go back into our dungeon, aka basement, the boys informed me that they hadn't been keeping score at all. They had no idea who was winning. They literally just did that to fuck with him. So then, the next boy comes in. This particularly sticks in my mind because the guy, let's call him... Let's call him Mark. So Mark walks in and the thing with him is me and him kind of like flirted a little bit and basically side story me and my housemate went back to his room uh, in halls a couple of weeks ago after a night out and basically my housemate knew that there was kind of like some flirty tension or whatever so he decided to go and like leave leave me in Mark's room so we can kind of talk I guess and get to know each other a little bit better and so he did and me and Mark talked and it was like one or two in the morning at this point and <laughs> I was in his bed because I was cold um Mark was sat down on a chair we were talking and then there was kind of like an awkward silence and I, I mean I understand how I could have given him the wrong impression I was in his bed but fully clothed. So Mark started to like get ready for bed and stuff and I started to realize it was ready to leave but obviously Mark I guess had gotten the wrong impression and thought I'd be staying the night which I wasn't. Um, and I'm just a very awkward person. I got up and I was like yeah I'm gonna leave now and <laughs> he was so surprised because he thought I was staying and he goes oh do you not want to stay and I was like no <laughs> that, that was it so we hadn't spoken since that happened and literally the next time I see him he's walking in completely naked <laughs> surprised to see me they tell him to kneel down in front of me like where I'm sat he's supposed to kneel down in front of me and tell me how upset he was that I left him that night. I feel like me and him are both mortified at this point because thinking about it, do you ever think that you'll ever be in a situation where a guy you've kind of been flirting with, the next time you see him, he's naked in front of you on his knees telling you how upset he is that you didn't sleep with him that time you were at his place? He proceeds to tell me how he had gotten his hopes up as soon as I got in his bed you know all the guys were laughing and I was kind of like nervous laughing because you know he's naked and he's there and he's covered in gross substances so I remember when my housemate asked for pubes they put his pubes in a drink and they made him drink it and he drank it so at this point this whole thing has been going on for a good four or five hours. The whole ordeal is nearing its end. So basically what they do is they order everyone outside into our garden. This is around this time, like December time. So it was freezing. And remember, these boys are butt naked. They have been for the past five hours. Everyone's ordered to go outside because it's time for them to be baptized as rugby boys. So, you know, if you're not particularly um, religious, you might not know, like when you're being baptized, obviously you're getting, you know, holy water poured on you. So obviously they needed something to pour over these boys. 
So remember that bucket that has been in the room for the past five hours? It got pretty full. It took the bucket outside, the person who was being baptised over the bucket got a bowl and poured it over them and that was then baptised. I want you guys to know that that bucket was steaming, like there was steam coming off it. These people were being baptised with puke, piss and shit, okay? I, I can't dance around this anymore, like I can't. So I'm watching this and even though I'm stood a good five metres, maybe six metres away from these people, I can smell them. People are understandably throwing up, <laughs> but luckily there's a bucket right there. So <laughs> they get given their rugby ties, which basically, I don't even know, it basically means that they're part, like officially, of the rugby team or whatever. Some of them went out that night without having had a shower. If you're at uni in England and ever think twice about getting with a rugby boy, just, just ask yourself, what has he had in his mouth or his hands? Because rugby boys, I don't know what it is, but rugby boys have a thing with drinking piss and I don't understand why. So anyway, they leave, they go out, I go to bed. In the morning, I look out my window and I see that the bucket of said items that we will not speak of um, is still in our garden. So. Obviously it's the morning after, people are hungover, they don't want to deal with this right now and I didn't really say anything. But then the second day passes and the third day passes. The guy that organised it, I asked him like, what are you going to do with the bucket? Like, it's been there for like three days. What you, like, what? And he's just like, yeah, 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 I'll do it at some point. Like, I'll do it. A week passes and it's so cold at this point that um, the bucket is frozen over. And coincidentally, it had like a wooden pole inside of it, I guess, to stir it when it was fresh. <laughs> so essentially, we had a frozen over bucket of shit in our garden for a week. When I tell people this story, people are just so perplexed as to how I survived that year. And quite honestly, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, I was desensitized to it. I was just like, there's a bucket of shit in my garden. <laughs> he just left it on the side of a road. So I am sorry to whoever had to, you know, get rid of it because that shit's disgusting. <laughs> Even though it's one of the most messed up memories I have from that time, it's actually the most funniest, I guess, like in a weird, fucked up way. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know down below. Um, oh, I forgot. These are this week's top comments. Um, thank you so much for commenting. And basically what it means is if you comment something down below in my most recent video and I like it, then I'll feature you in my next video. So I think I'll start doing the future comments at the end of my video rather than the start. So yeah. So hopefully, um, I'll see you later, see you soon, maybe. I'm a trash content creator, okay? Like, I'll try my hardest to record more videos for you guys, so just keep posted whenever I post.